Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on Tuesday, September 5th. That's right, we're in September now. Hope you all had a great Labor Day weekend. And today, as promised, quick video about our Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, who is now advocating the weak dollar policy in case you missed it last week. <clears throat> Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin told CNBC that a weaker dollar puts the United States in a better position on trade. Uh, and he has a quote here which ends with, obviously, as it relates to trade, having a weaker dollar is somewhat better for us. So let's think about what that actually means, what he's actually saying there. And then perhaps we'll touch on what that actually means for regular people, aside from Steve Mnuchin, who perhaps if they understood what this actually meant, would it be so in favor of the weaker dollar? And uh, hopefully I'll remember to cap it off with a very simple way of knowing that the entire idea is complete insanity. So the reason he's saying that <clears throat> is that essentially as the dollar weakens, it makes it cheaper for foreigners to buy things. So let's think about a simple example. Uh, US and Canadian dollar used to be around one to one. So let's just imagine for a moment it is. So if all of a sudden, let's say you're selling apples for a dollar to Canadians, and then the dollar weakens. To make the math simple, let's say it loses half its value. So now, whereas before the Canadian guy could come and say, all right, I'll take an apple here, you know, I trade my one Canadian dollar and you get the apple. Now it only costs them 50 Canadian cents because the dollar has been chopped in half. So essentially, for that same Canadian dollar, you can get twice as much stuff. So for everybody else, American goods are being put on sale. And yes, there is some validity to that, that sure, if it, when things get cheaper, people will often buy more. <clears throat> the only problem with that is that we, act, we import so much of the stuff. I mean, China makes the majority of what we buy here in America. So while there will be some exporters who might be able to sell more, pretty much everyone else who's buying things that are imported are going to see prices rise. And, <clears throat> you know, we, we've seen that happening already. Now, one of the things that the U.S. has been exporting has been dollars and at some point you know again I don't think we've seen the level of price increase from the inflation of the currency that you would have expected certainly I was in the camp that when the Fed printed four trillion dollars back in 2009 and then the following couple of years after that was expecting we'd see things that people wouldn't be able to avoid noticing now, certainly, if you're one of those rare people that actually goes and buys food or or, or puts gas in your car, um, well, I suppose gas may be uh, not the best example because there's other factors going on there. <clears throat> and we've seen some volatility, gas not at its highest levels, but, you know, a lot of these dollars are still being exported, Japanese buying them, China buying treasuries, although you continue to hear that their appetite for these treasuries is waning, which of course raises the question that if, if our biggest creditors stop buying them, who will? Um, in either case, a lot of the effects uh, I still are feel, I, I feel are still to be priced in and felt here because a lot of those dollars are in foreign nations, yet as they, if, should we reach that point, which I think is inevitable that some of these foreigners stop wanting dollars and then they come flooding back here, you'll see significant price increases. Or if Steve Mnuchin and his friends over at the Fed decide that 
they're going to print more money because they want to be able to export more so they can say, hey, look, the economy's roaring, but just because you're printing money to make your goods look artificially cheaper, you know, what's not factored in there is how with all the things that are coming in that you want to buy, if you want to go on vacation somewhere, you can just expect the prices of these things to skyrocket. As you can hear, Nib Nibbles over there agrees. Um, so here's a, the last uh, last way of thinking of why this really isn't a good idea that, you know, again, we used to think of the strong dollar policy, a strong, strong currency that was the reserve currency of the globe that had value, people had faith in, yet now we have the U.S. Treasury Secretary openly saying, let's print more currency so we can make our goods look artificially cheaper. That's not, <laughs> it's not really increasing productivity here. And the reason that, here's the simplest way of thinking about it, if that's really a good idea to make goods, raise exports by printing money, then why not just run the printing presses until they <laughs> the thing starts smoking just if if it were you know again going back to that there maybe there are free roles in life i don't know i i'm i'm searching for them i haven't found too many of them but certainly in economics where what i think is so beautiful about the the science is that there's it's very logical you do this and it has these consequences so if this were really a good idea why not just Print as much money as you can, and we'll export goods everywhere. People love buying them because they'll be so cheap, yet the price increases for everybody else are would be, are going to be, since I assume... <laughs> the sad part is that I think one way or another they will attempt to implement that type of strategy. Um, there's a headline... Um, it was this morning or yesterday, but basically the Fed is worried. The let's actually let's pull this up. It was I don't know whether to call these things funny or sad sometimes, but worries about low inflation and North Korea weigh on bond yields and stocks. So again, there we're back to the idea that things aren't expensive enough. Let's let's make <laughs> let's make it harder for the guy who's just trying to go do his job live and afford the cost of life and a place to live and food to eat. So uh, if inflation is low, which again is, if it sounds silly to you, it, it you're not alone. I mean, these are silly ideas yet from the perspective of how does this whole system operate? The Fed says, oh, inflation's low. Maybe we, we should not raise interest rates. Maybe we shouldn't unwind our balance sheet. Maybe we shouldn't unprint a lot of the money that we've printed. So you see the pieces fitting together of why, you know, you had the labor report last Friday, which was lower than expected. So again, now all of a sudden, the talk about the Federal Reserve and raising interest rates is saying, well, maybe not in September, maybe December, who knows? So now another year goes by where, yes, I will admit the Fed has raised interest rates all the way from zero to 1%, which is close to meaningless given the magnitude of the situation that we're in. And you have the Treasury Secretary of the U.S. advocating openly. Is not. I mean, these are the things that I think it was like 20 or 40 years ago, you had heard you, you someone had told you this. You wouldn't have believed them. Whereas now, it's it's amazing the statements that come out in public, which is why certainly for precious metals holders, things have taken longer than expected. Yet, when I think, is there anything to make me think? Well, may, maybe I made a mistake investing in silver or gold or some of these inflation protection assets don't take my word for it just listen to the, listen to what they say listen to they <laughs> at least he's not lying he's openly saying i want to manipulate the currency make it weaker 
And at some point, the results of that will, will be felt in the precious metals markets. I don't know exactly when it will be, but certainly that's why uh, I think it's good for many people that there is still time to prepare and take action. And if you have any questions on that or any of this, leave it below. I know thinking about uh, currencies moving, especially, you know, the goods that become more or less, uh, it takes a little while. So we'll rewatch the video again if uh, maybe it will help it sink in or leave a question below and we'll help clear that up for you. But <clears throat> there you go. They said it, not me. And with that said, who knows what will happen tomorrow, but we will be here. I'll be here. I say we on behalf of all the people who are involved in different ways, uh, whether it's people watching, uh, people leaving comments, uh, the other folks that I listen to and get information and research from. Uh, I like to think of this as a bit of a community we're building here. And Anyway, love hearing from you. So with that said, enjoy your night and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks.